Hey guys, Justin here with Just Tech. Today, I'm gonna to bring you my review of the Galaxy S7. Now, the S7's been out for a while now, so instead of doing a full traditional review, I thought instead what I'd do is do a, a comparison between the S6 and the S7, talking about the ways in which the S7 really refined the Galaxy brand. Now, there are a few things missing from the S6 that is brought back to the S7, and a few things that are still missing, but without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Starting with the design, Samsung definitely refined the S7 in the looks department. While the S6 was admittedly one of my favorite Samsung devices to date, the S7 absolutely trounces it with its subtle but definitely eye-catching design upgrades. With the rounded edges on the back borrowed from the Note 5, you get what feels like a slimmer, sleeker phone when it's actually slightly thicker. And gone is the unsightly and prone to breaking camera bump, and in its place a much better implementation of the camera sans a major bump. I'm really happy to see Samsung retain and refine the design language of glass and metal, while also adding in what many people were upset about being removed in the S6. I'm talking of course of waterproofing, and while I couldn't stand the flaps needed to make the S5 waterproof, I'm more than happy to see Samsung skip a generation of waterproofing to be able to offer it in a phone that looks and feels super premium without adding something like unsightly flaps. I really don't test the limits of waterproofing on any phone since I'm pretty careful with my devices, but knowing it's there is really a load off my mind. Next up, Samsung definitely refined the camera in a way that most people were probably not expecting. Instead of chasing megapixels yet again, Samsung actually reduced them. While the S6 had a 16 megapixel shooter, the S7 takes it down to a 12 megapixel shooter. However, they made these 12 megapixels bigger, which allowed each pixel to take in more light, and the result? Fantastic low light performance, and once you add in optical image stabilization, you've got one of the best, if not the best, smartphone cameras out there right now. While I'm probably a bit more partial to the more realistic looking images that I get from my iPhone 6S Plus, I still love the photos that I get from the S7. They look bright, vibrant, saturated, and most importantly, I get the shot I need when it happens. Its autofocus is among the fastest, if not the fastest out there. Having a camera that takes great shots is all well and good, but having a phone that can do that and not miss the shot you want means you have really something great in your hands. And as you can see from all these test shots taken with the S7, detail is sharp, pictures are crisp, and perfect for sharing with friends and family via social media. Another refinement of the S7 over the S6 is probably one thing that Samsung is always trying to refine, and that's TouchWiz. I almost wonder at this point if Samsung has always known they'd end up with something resembling stock Android, but instead of giving it to us all at once, they're going to piecemeal it out in incremental updates each generation so that they could show or say they're quote, working on it. I don't know, just a thought. And while I think a lot of us tech nerds would be ecstatic if a phone that looked and worked as well as the S7 all of a sudden got a stock Android update tomorrow, a large majority of people, I think, will be happier than ever with TouchWiz on the S7. Slowly disappearing are the duplicate apps and unnecessary feature bloat that has plagued previous Galaxy devices. While some of the unnecessary features are still there, the majority are now either gone or turned off by default, which at the very least shows that Samsung is aware that adding features for the sake of adding them was a bad idea from the start. Personally, I still installed Nova Launcher at the end of the day, but unlike with the S6, it took a few hours more while I actually played around with TouchWiz on the S7. A testament to Samsung's innovation? Eh, I think not. More like a genuine desire to try and live like the average user and see what they encounter day in and day out with TouchWiz. I'll be honest, I'm still not a fan, but I will say this might be more of a result of my OCD for things like uniform icons getting the better of me. All in all though, I guess I have to say I'm happy with Samsung, because they seem to be listening, and I'm sure we'll all have this conversation again, with TouchWiz getting slightly better with the Note 6 or Note 7 when it comes out later this year. One of the other things that I think sets the S7 apart from the S6 is actually a combination of two things. The battery life on the S7 is much better than on the S6. I think half of that is due to the increased battery capacity, which is up from 2550 mAh on the S6 to 3000 mAh in the S7, with the other half being due to the battery saving optimizations provided by Marshmallow. Coming from my Nexus 6P, I get slightly worse battery life with the S7, but really not much less, and certainly more than enough to get me through even a heavy day quite comfortably. Add in fast charging, wireless charging, and even fast wireless charging, battery life really isn't that much of a concern at all. One thing that is interesting is that the Nexus 6P has a much larger battery at 3450mAh. So for the S7 to get almost the same battery life with a smaller battery, that's a feat I'd say is pretty stellar. And for once, I think Google might want to take a closer look at what Samsung is doing in the software optimization department to see how they can get those kind of gains on the batteries in the Nexus devices. Lastly, there are a bunch of little things that I'll go over just quickly that all add up to creating the Android flagship to beat in 2016. Back in the S7, it's expandable storage via a micro SD card slot, a much faster fingerprint scanner than on the S6, and an optional always-on display that shows you the time and some notifications. While there are other flagships out there that are really great, the simple fact is most people are going to be happier with the S7 despite the few shortcomings it has. So guys, that's it. That's my review of the Galaxy S7. Now, if you couldn't tell, there's definitely a theme here. The theme is refinement. 
Samsung really took everything that was great about the S6, added in some missing features as well as some new features, and you have a very solid phone. Sure, you could go with the HTC 10 or even the LG G5, but I think for most people, the F7 is going to be where it's at. Of course, if you enjoyed today's content, be sure to hit that thumbs up button down below and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content just like this. I'll see you guys next time here at Just Tech.